if you imagine that the perfect weather for surfing is going to be all through the 2020s, uh, 2019 is where you get your surfboard. So just let us know a little bit about yourself and who you are and what brought you here today. Okay, so um, I'm an entrepreneur and an author. Um, I'm the co-founder of a company called Dent Global. We run accelerators uh, in Australia, Singapore, UK and the USA. Um, we work with entrepreneurs who want to stand out and scale up and make a positive impact in the world. Um, so myself, my background is as an entrepreneur, having built uh, a number of seven-figure um, and actually eight-figure businesses, and I've written four best-selling books on entrepreneurship. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about myself. Um, so that's pretty. Uh, that's a lot of stuff that you basically covered there. <laughs> so um, with the Thriving Entrepreneur Conference that's coming up in February, so what topic are you talking about, and what can people expect to hear from you? Well. The topic that I've been given is to look at the trends around marketing and entrepreneurship uh, for the next five to 10 years, um, which is the best topic ever because if I'm right, I seem like a genius. And if I get it wrong, I can just say, well, I didn't have a crystal ball. <laughs> so it's it's by far the best topic to ever be given. And with that said, I will make somewhat of an effort to make some sense of the next uh, period of time that we're going into. <laughs> And why do you think it's important for entrepreneurs to be looking forward ahead at that time frame? Because I think so many people would say, okay, five to 10 years, that's a long, that's a lot of projection. So why is it important for entrepreneurs to do that? Well, you're right. Um, one of the things that's most important is to be uh, very present and to be marketing and growing a business in the economy that we're in and not trying to get too far ahead of yourself. Um, so that's, I 100% agree there's great value in, in, in doing that. Too many businesses are stuck in the past. Too many businesses want to do business as though it's 2002 or 2012. Um, some businesses want to do business as though it's 2030 and they're ahead of themselves. So, you you know, it's really important that you are tuned into where we're at as a market, as an economy, as a humanity right now today. Um, but it's also worth looking at what are some of the trends? What are we sort of predictably going towards as entrepreneurs and business leaders? Um, the 2020s are going to be, I, I'm calling them already the roaring 2020s um, as a throwback to the 1920s. Uh, the 2020s are essentially going to be where all this transformation really accelerates and happens um, at a speed we've never seen before. The technology trends that are driving automation and globalization um, are really you know, moving out of experimental beta phase technologies and into widespread mainstream technologies. So, for example, you know, it took uh, you know, 10 years for the PC computer to go from something that geeks had to something that lots of people had, and then 10 years later, everyone had them. And then 10 years later, they introduced the idea of a computer in every pocket. And then 10 years later, every single person on the planet almost has a, has a supercomputer in their pocket connected all the time. Um, so we're actually moving in the same way. We've had 10 years of using technology where a few people had automation and globalization as a key part of their business embedded in the fabric of their business. When I'm talking about small businesses. And we're now moving into a time where all businesses will have automation and um, globalization built into the fabric of their business or almost all businesses. Um, so that's an interesting trend. The other major trend that's happening in the 2020s is um, the passing of wealth between generations. So we have a major demographic trend in the West called the baby boomers. Baby boomers own uh, two thirds of all assets that are in the economy. They own the big houses and the property portfolios, they own the pension funds and the stocks and the shares. And um, they're born 1946 to 1964 which means that they've actually, from 2016 onwards, they've begun turning 70. And in 2020s, they all turn 70. They're all moving into their 70s. Um, now, this is very significant because when people turn 70, right up until 70, they're in wealth accumulation mode and income earning mode, typically. Um, but when people turn 70, they go into wealth liquidation mode and they start selling assets in order to have experiences and in order to prolong health. Um, so what we have is the biggest generation in terms of size and wealth uh, moving into a very, very different phase of life. 
Um, so really for the last 50 years, the baby boomers have been in employment, you know, from their 20s right through to their 70s. In one form or another, they've been in employment and in income earning and wealth accumulation mode. Um, and now they're for the very first time they're moving into this different phase of life. So this is kind of the end of a 50 year run for the baby boomers in, as active participants in the economy uh, as workers and, and moving into something very different. It's very transformational, very you know, creates a lot of change, a lot of disruption. So we have two massive things happening, technological disruption and demographic disruption uh, in the 2020s. And businesses need to recognize that these trends will have an impact and create opportunities and create stresses or threats. Um, but awareness is key. Understanding it is key. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's a very exciting thing. It's something that we should be looking forward to um, and not be scared of. I think that's something that a lot of people think, oh, the future is something that's scary, but really it is something that's quite exciting. Mm. And you're right, big change is definitely going to happen. So certainly would be exciting for someone who's attending this kind of conference because they have a different mindset. They have a mindset of entrepreneurship. They have a mindset of change and um you know, they have a growth mindset. Um, however, the scary side of it is a lot of people who don't have that mindset will be displaced and will have a different, you know, life will be a bit different for them. Um, and they'll feel, you know, sort of uh, that their social contract has been broken. So there's, there's with change, there is some elements that are scary and some elements that are mean opportunity. Um, and, uh, and the trick is to be able to spot the opportunity amongst the change. And what are you looking forward to about the conference? Well, any conference like this is, for me, an opportunity to kind of brush up on all the different research and the trends. Um, you know, typically uh, when you're in a position of speaking on these sorts of things, um, you latch hold of a few key ideas and, um, and you develop theories and you discuss them. But when you get an opportunity to speak at new conferences, it's a great opportunity to, A, do more research um, and B, to see how people react to that and to see how people implement these changes and these trends and how they change their businesses as a, as a result. And what's next for you? What's coming up in the future that you're excited about as an entrepreneur? Um, well, loads. Uh, so I think 2019 is a great year to be um, creating a platform for growth. Um, and that's something that I'm working on um, very much. I'm writing a book at the moment called Doubling Speed. Doubling Speed is all about how to make the most of the 2020s so that if if you can double a business uh, every two years, there's five doubles in the 2020s. Um, and there's certainly the energy in, you know behind it to, to do it. Um, so if you started with a business um, that had uh, a million in revenue, uh, you'd be uh, you'd be at the end of five doubles. You'd go one to two, two to four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two million in revenue. So you could take a business uh, from one million to thirty-two million um, inside one decade if you lay the right platform now. And what piece of advice would you give people before the roaring twenty twenties, as you put it? Well, I think 2019 is, if you imagine that the perfect weather for surfing is going to be all through the 2020s, uh, 2019 is where you get your surfboard and you build your platform and you actually start working out what, um, what, you're going to, you know, what opportunities you're going to take advantage of and what, how you're going to prepare yourself and what assets you need to have in place and what networks you need to have in place. Um, maybe what investment you need to have in place going into the 2020s. So it's a it's a year of um, building a platform for having a really big 2020s. Yeah, well, I for one am very excited to hear you speak. I think the surfboard and the idea of the surfing is very visual and I can picture that. So hopefully I can do that myself. Um, well, perfect. And is there anything else that you wanted to add into the conversation? Sometimes when I talk about big trends, people almost feel a sense of anxiety because it's so much bigger than themselves. You know, the nature of a big trend like a demographic trend or a technological trend impacts millions of people, if not billions of people. Um, and it's very easy to feel disempowered or to feel um, like it's a trend far bigger than what you had in mind. Um, I guess one of the key things that I share with a lot of people is that every single person is standing on value. Everyone's standing on a mountain of value. You've got stories, insights, case studies, examples, um, networks, uh, you know, all sorts of interesting things, even things that haven't worked out well for you in the past contain valuable intellectual property. Um, 
So in a world that's fast changing, in a world where you can see 10,000 Instagram accounts doing interesting things um, just by flicking your finger through the phone, it's, it's very easy to get distracted from the value that you're already sitting on. So despite the fact that there's a lot of distraction, despite the fact that there's some big trends, the most important thing is that you come into that room acknowledging that you're already standing on a mountain of value and that um, really this is a conference about leveraging that value, not about distracting you from, from that value. And if people can't wait until the 1st of February to hear you speak again, um, where can they come and see you in the meantime? Have you got any events going on yourself? They could camp out on my front lawn um, <laughs> or, you know, um, uh, yeah, I've got a number of events. I, you know, I speak probably two or three times a month in London um, at various different things, different themed conferences. People can follow on my Twitter or my Instagram or my Facebook um, or just jump on and grab uh, one of the books. So I've written four books on entrepreneurship. Um, Entrepreneur Revolution has been re-released uh, this year um, with a revised edition. And um, it's, um, you know, it's got a lot about the entrepreneurial mindset and the trends that I'm talking about in there, as does the book 24 Assets.